Welcome to Multifamily Deal Lab, where your host, Dave Lindahl, dissects recent multifamily deals done by his guests. Dave will extract what went right, what went wrong, and a number of key takeaways so your next deal may be more profitable. So, Multifamily Deal Lab, here we are with the Q&A session with the partners from Oklahoma City, uh, Dave, Chris, and Cynthia. Uh, Jermaine, first question. First question is from Byron. He wants to know, for each of you guys, what drew you to the world of uh, commercial real estate investing specifically? Oh, boy. So, Can we yeah. take this one? I'll start. But we, have about a, we only got about like uh, 25 minutes, Cynthia. Okay, keep it quick. Okay, so I was, I know, it's my so funny story. story that insider is a long emotional story. It's really good. <laughs> we won't go there, right? No, but I was in music ministry for about 25 years. And I ended up leaving that, bought a commercial property, kind of stumbled into it and um, got bit by the bug. I didn't know anything about real estate and then found Ari Mentor and the rest was history. And that's when Dave and I uh, connected. So I came from a background of knowing I didn't know anything about real estate, but you learn, you, you deep, you know, deep dive into it and you learn as much as you can. But you had a desire to change, change something. I needed to change and I needed a why for my kids. I've been a single mom to these triplet boys that were getting older and I needed my why. I I never dreamed about like a future. I just did a W2 job. I got up, I worked, I went home. And so when you start dreaming and you start challenging yourself, what is your why? Why do you do what you do every day? And what do you want to leave? It, it changes your thinking. And this was the answer to that. Absolutely. Chris, uh, Dave? We, 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 we didn't get the, the Jesus working for the ministry joke, Cynthia? Oh, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll have to watch the insider clip for that. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to watch the insider clip. No, anyway. I know. Uh, that, that's a little bit inside. Anyway, so uh, my why behind getting into this is when you look at over history, what is the number one largest wealth generator ever? It's real estate. So, and, and you can't argue with the numbers. So for me, I think that it provides a really great revenue and wealth building opportunity. And, and on top of that too, one thing I'm really passionate about alongside real estate is I also am heavily involved in the online coaching space. I think I, I won't get into my whole spiel. I think there's going to be a dramatic shift away from traditional education systems and universities and all that's going to become a lot more fragmented towards coming towards experts like Dave to learn very specific skills based on what you want. So within that, I bring this up for a reason because I, my vision, our vision is investing in real estate but not just in, in the purpose of making money. It's how can we enrich the lives of our tenants? So we call them our partners, people we partner with in our properties and really improving communities and doing all that while also making good money and building wealth. So my long-term vision and the why I've also wanted to do this was the wealth side of it, but then also seeking to make an impact and a difference. A vision that we have as a group is how do we take these people, improve their lives and even take the co online coaching side of it. And really like even pair that and give some of our tenants different opportunities to improve themselves if they so desire and become the best versions of themselves. So that's a little bit of my why behind that. All right on, Dave. Yeah. Byron, thank you for the question. One of the things that I looked at through this time in, um, is investing in, in properties. It was condos to houses, the complexities, the, the distance. And I said, there's got to be a better way here. Um, so that was where the multifamily is. Dave, we, I went to a you know, a quick two hour seminar. Next thing you know, I'm, I'm coaching full time with you, knowing that um, it was expensive. You know, at the time I looked at it and said, this is an investment into my education. Um, at the time I looked at it and said, I can either make a mistake. It'll cost me a lot more money or I can go ahead and get the education. You know, ultimately, I'm not going to go become a doctor and start cutting people and practicing. I'm going to go ahead and get an education first. So same type of thing here. Um, you know, my why is, is that foundational wealth and legacy, you know, providing better for, you know, my family and, and options for them to do things that unfortunately, a lot of the times um, people struggle because there's not enough resources, be it financial side there. So my why is, you know, as Christopher mentioned, is making an impact, really influencing and helping people. So thank you, Byron, for the question. Awesome. Next question, Jermaine. All right. This one from Morgan. Morgan wants to know what trends or shifts are you currently observing in uh, the commercial real estate commercial real estate space? Cynthia, you want to take that one or you want me to help jump in? Why don't you jump in? Okay. After that, you go. Uh, obviously, the market has dramatically changed over the past couple of years. You look at 
the market, as Dave was mentioning earlier, got really, really hot. It cooled down. Interest rates are super high and everything like that. Uh, given those changes, obviously deal flow is not as high. Whereas uh, a couple of years ago, you would have to hound after different brokers and stuff like that to get deals. Now it, it's not as much the other way. It's kind of the brokers are now starting to go ahead and try to call us because they're needing to go ahead and get deals and the deals aren't as much uh, there as of right now. So I think some of the trends that we're seeing is uh, there's going to be a lot more people that are probably also going to be in trouble financially. I know actually in one of our insider club events, Dave, uh, Eric Stewart did a presentation talking about the, the different type of you know loans and stuff like that that's going to be coming due this year and people's inability to go ahead and pay them and everything like that. So over the rest of the year, I think that people are going to start to feel the pain a lot more. They're also going to start feeling the pain of, as you mentioned, Dave, people paying crazy numbers that they couldn't really make cash flow and all of that. So I think there's going to be a lot more opportunities that will be coming here over the coming months, years, and stuff like that. Um, and then it'll also be interesting as you know, interest rates and everything like that continues to to pivot and shift as well. Mm-hmm. Good answer. All right, Jimmy. Next question. All right, this is from Har- This is from Javier. He says, "If you can go back, what would you tell yourself before you started this venture that could help you today in your business?" Is that the Javier from? Um uh, Les Miserables. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Because as soon as you said Javert, I thought, oh yeah, that, I remember that play. It's awesome. Yeah. What was that it's question good. again? Sorry. If you can go back, what yeah. would you tell yourself before you started this venture that could help you today in your business? Uh, I could start that. Um, you know, be when I first started way back in 1996, there's nobody out there teaching how to invest in multi-family properties. Uh, so, and I did well here in Boston. I bought a bunch of uh, smaller three, six unit properties and I did that for a few years. Um, and then I jumped up into bigger properties with all the gusto and ready to take on the risk and all that. And, and I jumped in and the first two deals went really well. I jumped into the third one. It was a uh, repositioning 400 units, um, 46% occupied, didn't know what I didn't know. And man, I had to work six years on that deal just to break even. It was brutal. I ended up paying off all the investors because I was so embarrassed. And uh, it was just a really, really rough deal. So my thing would be, I would partner with, as I'm take, as I'm going through each level of ascension, I would partner with people that had already been there, you know, and shadow them before I start doing deals on that level. What about you guys? Great advice. That's a great question. You we, looked at, we looked at the same similar type of thing. I mean, I, I you know, I'll start off with, don't be afraid. You don't know what you don't know yet until you get there. So, you know, you can announce paralysis, but you just got to take the pull the trigger and, and start moving in a direction of education, but actually deal finding, underwriting, just get into it. Um, and Dave, I think we took your same advice. I mean, we jumped into a 16 door to a 16 door to a 22 door, sold a 16 number two to a 40 door. And then we looked at this and said, it's time for us to get to the next level. And so we invested into a syndication and got part of the GP side, so we better understand it. So yeah. yes, I, I think your advice is, is spot on. Yeah, it takes patience. You've got to be patient with yourself and just t- take small, if you're, especially if you're still working, you've got to carve out time to take action steps and have the right mindset. So you've got to protect your mind and make sure you surround yourself with people that are supporting your goals, your steps, your dreams. Wow, that, you know, just to unpack what you just said, you said it quickly, but there's a couple of really key elements in there. You said a little bit every day, <clears throat> consistency for everybody listening, consistency is the key to success. And consistency is just a little bit every day. You can do a lot every day if you want and be consistent, but you just got to do a little bit every day. And if you do that, you will be successful. Um, and then the second thing, um, you said, I forgot what the second thing you said, but it resonated with me. What was that second thing? Uh, patience. Surround patients, yourself. Surround yourself with. Surround yourself with people that support. Oh, yeah, protect your mind. You said protect your protect mind. Protect your mind. Yeah. The you know the difference between I was talking to Stephen Page a little bit earlier, right before this call. Steve is another insider member, and um, he's done some really really big deals in the healthcare space. And he and so we were talking about uh, he was connecting me with somebody, and um, he said, you know, I love insiders. I love insiders. He said, I really love the fact that you wrap mindset around it because without the mindset piece of it, you know, that's what stops people from being successful. And it is. So when you say protect your mind, protect your mind, expand your mind, you protect your mind by surrounding yourself with people that are going or that have either, either gone where you want to go or support you in going to where you want to go. And sometimes we can't, we can't eliminate our family, 
you know, but sometimes our family and friends are our biggest deterrents, you know? So yeah, we'll keep them in our lives, but we'll put them, you will put them in a pocket, you know, and they'll, they'll be allowed to talk about certain things and other things you just can't talk about. You just pivot the conversation, you know, when they're giving you the negative advice, um, different things. So true. Well, one thing, one thing I'll add as well, Dave, within it, there, there's two parts that I wanted to do and I'll keep it quick. Cause I know we have a couple of different questions. The first one is taking action is the most important thing. You could learn all of the stuff in the world and know everything, but knowledge is useless unless it's applied. So I think that was one of the biggest things is just taking action of what to do. Getting a coach, getting a mentor like Ari Mentor is huge because now you're taking the guesswork out of it. It's just very simple. Here's what it is. And you just run after the action steps that you state. So that's like the first part that I'd say. And then the second part as well, there's actually one of the things I was considering saying when you asked the question earlier, what are some of your favorite books? Uh, one of my favorite books was The Power of Habits by Charles Duhigg. And what it talks about, as you just said, is consistency every single day. It's not about trying to just move mountains and do all of this work and then nothing. It's just every single day consistently. And inside of the book, it says, how do you make something so easy that you can't not do it? And that was really powerful for me because then it just built upon each other. So I'd say for people looking to get started, what's one thing I wish I knew is just the understanding of taking small actions every single day and make it so easy that you can't not do it. Example, and I know I'm getting a little long-winded. I want to get in the habit of reading books. And I told myself, oh, I want to read books because I know successful people do it. It'll teach me a lot. It'll help me grow as a person. And that's where I want to be because I have large goals and dreams and visions, all of that. And so I told myself, okay, every single day, you need to read one paragraph. So no matter what it was, I stumble home late. I'm at college and I sit in my bed and I turn my head over to go to sleep and I see the book staring at me in the face. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like I need one paragraph. So it's like me, like with my phone light, like half open, or like half asleep, stuff like that, reading it. And so I think that that same thought can also be applied in real estate because one paragraph turned into two paragraphs, turned into a page turns to three pages, turn to 10 pages. And next thing you know, you have this really strong habit rather than, oh shit, I know I'm supposed to be doing a lot of stuff. I do, I read 10 pages and then I don't read for three months. It's the same exact thing in real estate too. I'm going to call a lot of brokers and then nothing. So I think what's really important as Cynthia said, like give yourself grace and understand it's a learning curve and process, but start off small. And then you now have a habit where it's just every single day, you're doing the things you need to in order to be successful as given with a mentor. So it ended up being a little long winded, but I think it's an important thing that has changed a lot for me. Yeah. Uh, Jermaine, next question. Uh, okay. This one is from Destiny. Uh, she wants to know what are some publications or websites uh, that you use to keep you informed about trends within the real estate industry? I listened to a great podcast by uh, Willie Walker from Walker Dunlap. He used to be one of the top 10 Fannie Mae borrowers. Uh, back when we were building that 9,000 unit portfolio. Um, and so I got to know him. He's actually the father of the, uh, the son of the founder, but he did, his father did the right thing and sent him off to work for somebody else before he would take him into the family owned business. And oh. that guy's brilliant, but he also brings on brilliant guests. So I like that one. Uh -huh. Who else wants to add? Uh, another one that I'd say is PropStream is a cool, it's not as much of trends, but I think it's cool kind of getting more in depth data is one website that I like to use. Uh, another thing too, just getting an understanding of local news, understanding businesses okay. that are moving into an area, uh, even just speaking directly with people in the area, the city council, um, all, the economic development, all, all of that sort of stuff. I think that provides a lot of really great insight as to where the city is going um, and stuff yeah. like that. Stay involved in some real estate investing groups around you. You know, go to meetups. Talk to the brokers too. When you talk to brokers, they all have uh, lots of, they'll share with you everything about what's going on in the area. Do deeper dives into the cities that you want to be into. Like Chris was saying, call the city councils. We have some great relationships um, with our East Texas properties with the, the local police. We talk to them monthly and they are, you know, they're the boots on the ground. So you, there's a great way to find out. Just got to dig in there. Great question. Yep. Next nice question, Jermaine. All right. This one's from Ryan. And I think we get this one every week, but I'm going to read it because it's different people every week. But someone new to real estate investing, what advice would you give them as they begin their journey? Okay. So go ahead, yeah. guys. Go ahead, yeah. Dave. So you get around like-minded people. 
understand. I mean, we talk about protect your mind, your direction, you know, do your reading, but yet get somebody that is one or two steps ahead of you, asking yeah. questions. You know, uh, the best education is through a question and you don't understand what you don't know until you start asking questions and you start identifying different, you know, you peel back the onion. The question would be is, is you're always, you know, and, and Dave, I could probably ask you this question. Are you still learning today after 20 plus years? There's still information that you're still acquiring and going and looking for. So you're the constant student. So just be willing to take advice, take direction and get around to the, the right people. It's the only thing I can right. really press. Yeah. To add on to that, find a partner. With all the networking, go to the events and find a partner, find someone you're like minded with and just get started with them. Have an accountability partner. Someone that says, hey, what are you doing? Did you do? Have you checked out? You know, and help each other, encourage each other because you it's hard to go it alone because there's so many pieces to it. So find that partner that you can walk together and help each other out. And you need to recognize whether or not, um, you know, the type of person you are. You can take a disc test. Uh, to do that but you know i've never needed an accountability partner for anything because if i wanted something i would just like i had the desire i would do it you know i would just i would figure out what i needed to do to get it done and then i would just go out and do it I, a lot of times i would just uh work quietly you know a lot of people wouldn't didn't know what i was doing you know i'd be working on the, these projects i still do that today you know i see something that i'm interested in and and i want i want something or i want some knowledge and I just go out and learn it and do it. So if, if you're that type, that's good. I mean, there's certain people that are that type. And then the other type are the people that need accountability. They need a kick in the ass. They need somebody to say, hey, did you do this? Or, hey, I did this. And if you're that type, then find that good accountability partner where you guys can grow together. It, it doesn't matter what type you are, you know, but recognizing what type you know, type you are is really, really important. Um, so, so that being said, the most important thing you can do is consume information. And as you're consuming information, the second most important thing you can do is do it. You know, do it as fast as possible. Analyze the results. What I do right, what I do wrong, how can I be better? Um, the, you know, the only way you get better is being willing to be bad. All right, this is my formula for success. It's called be bad, get good, master. Most people don't have the willingness to be bad. Um, so therefore, they never get started at anything. They don't never put in an offer. You know, they never analyze a deal. Um, so be willing to be bad and just, you know, you did. So what, you know, you, you didn't work out, you know, you were bad. You didn't do it right. That's okay. Um, and then as you're learning, uh, then you're getting good. And as you're getting good, you know, think good things start to happen. Um, and then eventually from getting good, you actually get into the mastery part of it. Um, and then, you know, then you make a decision. What else do I want to do? Right. Focus, focus, focus. You have the success and then success leads to more success somewhere else. So that, this, that's my advice. So much of this revolves around building relationships too. I just want to tell a quick story that one of the first brokers I met with when I just gotten started, I, I was so nervous about if I would say the wrong thing or promise too much or over, over promise what I knew because I didn't know a lot. And I invited this broker to lunch and he had just started a, um, a business with his brother and they were looking for people and I was looking for him. And he told me, we just talked and he told me about how he had a green Pontiac sunburn, I think was the name of it. But I went out and Googled that to thank him for lunch. I went out and got him a t-shirt with a picture of one of those on it and said, hey, thanks for lunch. Can't wait to do deals with you. Thanked each other. We didn't hear from him about a year. He's brought us three off-market properties now. Wow. And we still talk about that shirt. So you just got to build relationships and it didn't pay off right then. He ended up going working for another brokerage house, but he remembered me because he has that t-shirt, some crazy lady that sent him his high school car on his shirt, but he remembered me. And, and now he's, we've made him some money. He's gotten us some properties. So it's been great relationships. Jermaine, I need to ask how many questions we have more because I've got a, I've got a, a, a time stop at the top of the hour because I got to be on another call, but these guys can stay on and answer questions. This is the last one, actually, Dave. Okay. All right. This, one, this one's from Justin. Wait, wait, wait. Because uh, Chris didn't answer. Chris, did you want to add anything to uh, what was said? I, I think you guys covered a lot of really great stuff on it. One thing that I would say is when, whenever you're starting something, as you said, Dave, you're going to feel like a newbie. And so many people are afraid of looking stupid, of making mistakes. But once you get over the hurdle of, look, whenever you get started, 
of course, having access to certain information will help you make less mistakes, but you're going to make mistakes no matter what. So getting over your ego of, look, I don't want to look stupid. Once you do that, everything becomes so much because it's just very simple. You have to take certain steps on it. And I think that even some people, they have like this, this worry internally of how am I going to do it? They don't have the confidence. Know that confidence is built. Obviously, there's a lot of different things within mindset that are super important. But in the same sense too, this is one of my favorite quotes. It's by an entrepreneur by the name of Alex Ramosi. And what he says is confidence is built not only by shouting affirmations at yourself in the mirror, but also by building a, a stack of undeniable proof that you are who you say you are. So within that, what does that mean? It means if you're looking to become a real estate investor, of course, the affirmation is all you need that because mindset is so important. On top of it too, you need to make sure you're taking the actions that prove to yourself, I'm a real estate investor. I'm going to do them. That comes back to like the habit stuff of just every single day. You understand what you have to do. You have to call this many brokers and then you just slowly start building and taking action. So I, I think that's something that's really important for a new person to understand what they need to do in order to really get involved in the space. And to go deeper into that, there's that book, Atomic Habits, that actually talks about, you know, mm -hmm. you say, do the things that, if you're a real estate investor, you do the things that, that show that you're a real estate investor. The small things, not like, oh, no, I, I'm not a real estate investor until I get a deal. Mm -mm. Yeah. You know, I tell people you're a real estate investor when you put in your first offer. But in reality, you're a real estate investor when you make that decision that that's what you're going to do. And then you start doing, mm -hmm. taking the actions that takes you to that first offer, to that first deal. But Atomic exactly. Habits talks about the fact that, You've got to tell yourself if you want to, um, you know, if you want to uh, get a new figure, you know, you got to tell yourself, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I've got the body of an athlete, you know, and then you fall into that role. And by doing that, your mind will also fall into that role as well. And, and it will, it will prompt you to do things that are um, not coherent, but can, can consist that are equal with, with being that particular personality. But anyways, that's a good Absolutely. resource for that. It's really important too. It's a, it's a really important concept that if you want to like do a hack and become successful faster, go deeper into that concept and understand it. And that's what will get you there faster. Uh, last question, Jermaine. I, I was going to add, do you mind if I had one thing, 30 seconds? Okay. Uh, Atomic Habits, one of the best things it talks about is 1% better every day. And what I do is I journal every day, just sort of like a self-reflection. And I literally have a section in my journal where I put, where did I get 1% better today? And I actually, I pulled this up. If you can see it, I have my little ring light, might make it hard to see. If you get 1% better every single day, you are 37 times better in one year from now than you are today. So it's, as I said, it's not about moving mountains. It's about small, consistent actions that make the put big that difference. Back up there. Put that back up there too. Yeah. Put it back up because I just want to show something. So you can see how there's very little progress there for a little while, little while, little mm -hmm. while. And all of a sudden, it takes off, and that's what happens. You know, there's a, you, it's progress that you don't even see, but consistent progress builds on itself, builds on it, builds on, and all of a sudden, it's like the hockey stick. It's like boom, and then you look back and you don't even recognize where you used to be. So it's exactly. important. All right, last question. All right. Last question from Justin. Justin wants to know, what is the best piece of advice that has particularly been influence, influential in your real estate life that you can share with the rest of us? Mm -hmm. I got one. So my first mentor said to me, uh, his name is Mark. And um, he said, I was on my like fifth or sixth property when he came into my life. And, um, I, and they were all small properties. And he said, um, he said, Dave, you know, it's not that hard to be successful. And I was like, really, Mark? <laughs> Explain it to me because, you know, I've been chasing that for a while now in my life and I haven't quite gotten there yet. And he said, well, do you ever play checkers? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, what's the, object what's the objective when you're playing checkers? What do you want to do? He said, well, you want to get your pieces over to the other side, you know, so you can become kings. And he said, right. So you get all your pieces or as many pieces as you can to the other side as fast as possible so you can become a king. And when you're a king, what can you do? I said, oh, when you're a king, you can make any move you want. You can go any more, anywhere on the board. He said, absolutely. He said, that's the reason why people aren't successful. I said, why? He said, because people act like kings before they become kings. So therefore, they never become a king. I thought, wow, that's pretty profound advice. So it's like you go out, you do your first deal, you get some money, you don't go out and buy a Hummer. You know, you, you put that money into the next deal. You stack, 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 and then eventually... You know, you can go out and buy a house in the mountains and do whatever you want, type of a thing. So uh, that was really, really good advice. You know, you see these people on the um, on the ads all the time in front of Lamborghinis, you know, 
And uh, half the time they don't even own them or, or going onto a plane, you know? So that's not what it's all about. It's about growing steady. All right, you're, you guys' turn. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think mine will be simple. Believe in yourself and know that you can do it. Um, you know, there's all the mindset, there's everything, but at the end of the day, can you already envision yourself at the position of freedom, position, you know, envision it, have the vision, know that you can do it, know that you're going to, it might take you longer than somebody else. You might be there quicker, but it doesn't matter. The end point, I'm going to finish the race. I'm going to be, I am the real estate investor. I am going to make this as part of my life. So just have belief in yourself that you can conquer. That's the law of frequency. Study the law of frequency. If you understand the law of frequency and act on it every day, you will get to your goals yep. in a micro nanosecond. All right. Uh, so, um, Cynthia, real quick. Um, I gotta go. I gotta yeah, I would go kind of with Dave's. It's just, you know, if there was ever a why me, I, I know I heard back, why not you? If other people can do it, and I don't have a history in real estate, I don't have a history in any of it. And if I can do it, Anybody else can do it, but you have to act. You can't just study, study, study. You have to act on it. You got to pick up the phone. You got to underwrite. You got to do the work. Chris, did we do a you with this one? I don't want to. No, you're good. Uh, I, my, mine was the same exact one as Cynthia. Knowledge is useless unless it's applied. Nothing's going to yep. change unless you do. So taking action and implementing this stuff is pivotal, in my opinion. Great question. Nothing happens without action. All right, again, thanks for listening. Uh, send this to a friend if you think it'll be useful for them. And we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys. You did awesome. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Awesome. thanks, Dave. This has been another edition of Multifamily Deal Lab. If watching on YouTube, please be sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, so you don't miss the next session. And review the contact links on this page. <laughs>